Good morning all. Today I'm working again on the Vocoder project and uh, I'm building the second board. Uh, well, it's the third board, I suppose, because um, I've got the noise generator here. This is the triangle wave oscillators and this is just a comparator board, but it has to be on a separate board because it has uh, separate pots. There are two channels. This is kind of channel A, channel B, uh, and that's going to sit in there and then I've got to work out some sort of interconnection system between these two boards. It's just going to be cut up bits of wire, basically. So the first board, which is already on the front panel, is these two uh, triangle wave oscillators. Now this second board, all it is, are these two comparators. They're actually op-amps, uh, TL082, although I'm using TL072 because that's all I could buy. Um, and, but there's no feedback, so they're working in comparator mode. The triangle wave from the triangle wave oscillator goes into the non-inverting input, and then the inverting input uh, simply can be varied between ground and close to 12 volts, so that it can sort of trim off the top of the triangle wave, uh, resulting in a wide pulse. Would it be a wide pulse? Uh, anyway, when, when you get to ground, it's I think it's a wide pulse. When you get near to 12 volts, it, it takes the pulse uh, very narrow, and a square wave comes out of the top here. Um, now, interestingly, this pot says CW, and I think it means that clockwise is towards ground, which is unusual. Normally, anti-clockwise is towards ground, but this works the other way around, so I've had to factor that in. Now, annoyingly, I don't have the right, the right value pots. Uh, these are 5K, and the circuit specifies uh, a 2k2 preset so these are actually loose I haven't soldered them into the holes but I have soldered the wires on and uh, they move around and the idea there is just so that when I do get the 2k2 pots or it might be 2k0 actually um, I can get these two out without uh, completely destroying them or even destroying the board so I've uh, done a temporary job on that and the other thing I've done here is I've added a couple of links and uh, I'll try and explain what they're for. Uh, as I say, this is a triangle wave oscillator and it comes into this comparator and that squares it up with variable mark space ratio from uh, a big fat uh, mark space to a very narrow pulse. Uh, so it's a series of short narrow pulses. Now I thought it might be useful to actually be able to pass the triangle wave uh, shape through to the output and it's relatively easy to do. If you cut the um, this track here and then put pin 2 onto uh, a 3 pin header, the inner pin there can go to the original pot. So if you link across these, pin 2 goes to the pot as before, but this one actually goes to the output. So that if you link the inverting input round to the output, this thing becomes a unity gain non-inverting buffer. In other words, a circuit which just passes the signal straight through without modifying it. So we can pass the triangle wave straight through this by linking it this way, or we can uh, square the triangle wave up and turn it into a variable mark space square wave by linking it uh, how the original circuit diagram uh, shows it being wired. Uh, the reason for using square wave uh, in the vocoder is because uh, a square wave has all the harmonics added on to the fundamental frequency. So these oscillators are actually very low frequency oscillators. These can go down to 100 or even 10 hertz. And then by uh, squaring the wave off, it adds all the upper harmonics onto that. So that what gets fed into the vocoder is a very broad spectrum of uh, audio frequencies from the fundamental and including all the harmonics. Now this board's taken several hours to build, like the other one. It's all the decisions you're making constantly as you're going on, how you're going to route the tracks. I've tried to do mostly uh, this way on the bottom and mostly sort of horizontal on the top, but you can't always stick to that. It just doesn't work out in practice. The other thing is I've had to put um, rows of these connecting sockets on one side for linking to the board that side and also on the other side to pass through and go on to the next board and they all have to be uh, interconnected so which is why I've put them 
with one hole in the middle so I could run little wire links through. I did try on these centre pins just bridging solder across but it's surprisingly difficult to bridge the gap between these pads and you have to lay a lot of solder into there to get it to do it. I did get it to do it. Um, these have turned into giant solder pads because uh, I'm using two pins for minus 12 volts that would be, two pins for ground and two pins for plus 12 volts and then these are my inputs and outputs and actually I've not wired inputs and outputs to the chips inputs and outputs yet so I've still got to do that but I'm going to give up on trying to run it all with neat straight wire links I'm just going to run some uh, pieces of insulated wire to do these inputs and outputs because uh, these wire links just take up too much space and take too long quite honestly. Right those are the input and uh, output wires for the two channels uh, wired in and they were a lot quicker to do than fiddling about with this bare tinned copper wire. Uh, now what I've done is I've put the inputs to this board on the inner connectors and the outputs from this board on the outer connectors bar one because that's just what I happen to do on the other board. Uh, so that's a way of uh, me trying to remember where inputs and outputs are. Um, as I say plus 12 ground minus 12 on the power connector block in the middle. Now I've not put any decoupling capacitors on either of the boards at the moment um, partly because actually I'm quite interested in whether coupling has an effect and it could have a positive effect in that it could lock the frequencies of the two oscillators together. But anyway, I'm going to put this on the front panel now and put some of the interconnecting wires in. Right, the two boards are linked. Uh, we've got the output from this board going to the input of this one, uh, plus 12, ground and minus 12. And then the other output of this board going to the other input of this one. So this board needs power, which I'll put on the uh, power pins here and also needs the outputs taken off and put into my speaker system. Uh, now the actual mixer is going to be on the third board. The mixer is an op-amp with lots of inputs going in. One from this oscillator, another one from the noise source, one from the external excitation preamp. Um, so that's not built yet. So I'm going to build a quick and dirty mixer. Uh, right, here's my audio mixer. It's just two resistors and a capacitor to feed into my speaker system and I've just plugged in these four wires for power um, but I think these um, turned pin sockets may have been a little bit affected by the heat the intense heat of um, soldering those link wires through so I think I might have to be um, careful also these you know I've put four connectors there where I actually only need two well, possibly having the extra one will be useful if um, one of the connectors is a bit loose or, or fails. So a bit of redundancy built in there. Right, let's put power onto these four wires and see what we get out of the output. Right, okay, that's all set up. Um, I added an extra resistor there because it's very loud, or at least it will be. Uh, it's not going to be loud just for the moment. Batteries, of course, for my plus and minus 12 volts. It's more like about plus and minus 10 uh, cheapy speakers here. Now I've linked these links so that the comparator is actually not a comparator at the moment it's just um, passing the triangle wave oscillator signals from the first board straight through and here are the two oscillator controls these green knobs um, they go very low frequency right down to barely running at all and they go up to about that, which is only about one kilohertz, I suppose. Now that's with them both pretty much tuned the same. That's sort of tuned to fifths. And that's tuned to octaves. And you can mess around with um, getting them tuned to the same frequency. and hearing that lovely phasing sound when they're almost exactly the same but not quite and then detuning them a bit you 
I'm getting nice chord sounds. And stuff like that. Right, I've turned them both down to minimum frequency. Now it gets much louder for some reason when you put the square wave thing on, so let's do that. And the other one, which is a bit tricky, I'll do that from the bottom. And now I've got frequency controls. And shape controls. Let's turn one of those down. Pretty weird stuff. So apologies to uh, headphone wearers, uh, that probably was quite raucous on the ears. But uh, yeah, anyway, there it is so far, the uh, triangle wave oscillators, the comparators. Now the next board will have level controls on it, so I can turn it down a bit. Unfortunately, my cheapy amplifier is just on or off, there's no volume control. I suppose it relies on uh, plugging it into a phone and turning the volume down on there. But this will have volume, it'll also mix the two uh, channels and uh, I might add a bit more circuitry on this board if I can fit it on but uh, for the moment that's as far as the vocoder has got um, just frequency and shape controls for the excitation section cheerio